Blessed is the man that worketh not in the council of the heathen, not sitting in the seat that is can't fall. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did it sunrise and sundown. Him I go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in the season. Him live never I go wither, and whatsoever him do shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now there saw them there like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn upon judgment, not a sin among them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God, Jah, love the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them always. And always I could perish. Where two and trees meet in the name of the most I ja at death so jaja de. If Jaja never watch upon your house, the watchman I go watch it in vain. Same way, if Jaja never build up your house, the builder I go build it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and them is safe. Yes, where two and trees meet in the name of the most I ja at death so jaja de. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I ja, so therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty for ever and ever. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamu. And this is where we speak truth to power. My name, Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, whenever you see the black pot resting on the fire, you know that good things are about to befall you. Good tidings. Oh, my God. Nutrition, strength, energy, togetherness, and much more. My brother and my sister, in the African home, food time is time to do so many different things and not just sitting and eating. This is where we share ideas. This is where we come together to eat from one pot. My brother, my sister, this is what we are serving the nation. We are masters of Pan-Africanism on TV. We are called the Black Pot aka kukushunomo where we speak truth to power and of course we normally don't like to criticize but if we must criticize we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy because we are in the service of god and country we are only looking at the development of our people our continent our land and by the power of satellite we are watched all over the world the continent of africa loves us my brother my sister we are live on Pan African TV, also live on Loud Silence TV, loud on Ghana Web TV, and loud on our own TV, Black Empire TV. Yes, you can also catch us live on our YouTube channel, Black Empire Media, where we are also streaming live. Well, the name again, Black Rasta, the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushono. Now, let's look at the very first story we have today. And what is the story talking about? Watch this. Customs boss fingered in another corrupt show of power. This is the man. This is the man. Colonel retired Kojo Damwa. My brother, my sister. Now he's supposed to be the boss of Customs Excise and Preventive Service. You know, a wing of the GRA. Ghana Revenue Authority. And this is the story. Colonel Damwa retired, cited in another excise scandal but let me give you a background before this hear me now this was the same man a couple of weeks back came out very angrily against the office of the special prosecutor what did he say you are a small boy and he was referring to the special prosecutor i am older than you you cannot witch hunt me you cannot bring me down and this is the special prosecutor, Kesi. The whole of Ghana condemned the countenance, the attitude, in fact, of Kenner retired Kojo Damwa. He spoke so arrogantly and so childishly. 
And you know, on this show, we don't mean words. Because we are not on the payroll of any politician. So we speak our mind all in the interest of the nation. A grown man like this. And he was speaking like an infant. Attacking virtually the special prosecutor. Now the special prosecutor said, listen, I am going to investigate deeper your activities. It looks like you are only trying to bring up a defense gimmick. And if you are a correct psychologist or you've studied a bit of psychology, you will know that when people pull out their defensive mechanism, most of the time they have something to hide. They have skeletons in the cupboard. So the office of the special prosecutor decided to investigate this man more. Now he tried to trivialize the whole thing, trivialize the whole thing by saying, oh, it was all about one Akurugu. And because I refused to allow Akurugu to join the office of the special prosecutor, he decided to witch hunt me out of anger and bitterness. But Ghanaians are becoming more discerning. Ghanaians are beginning to realize that politicians are only interested in breaking the eight and winning the next election. They are not thinking about the people. So Ghanaians are beginning to think about the future of their children. Now, their future may be messed up, but they are ready to sacrifice their future now so they can have a checkered future for the next generation. So, Kenneth retired, Kojo Damua, is going to be investigated, as you've seen. Now, what is the story saying? Come along, let's read this story. It's interesting. What is the story saying? It says, there were some cargo trucks that went all the way from some part of the country all the way into Accra and the interesting thing they went all the way to the heartbeat of Accra and then they were stopped now the story continues the cargo trucks were suspected to have under declared and misdescribed their goods at the Aflao border that's upon entry into Ghana Aflao border Upon arrest, the trucks with registration numbers GW6957 registered in 2013 and GT8502 registered in 2016 were escorted to the Customs Laboratory Division at the Kotoka International Airport runabout for re-examination. It was revealed after the re-examination that a substantial number of goods in the trucks were undeclared, in fact, undeclared, and thus no duties were paid on same the letter said but during the interrogation and this is very important check it but during the interrogation the traders were said to be discourteous that's disrespectful towards the officers with one allegedly placing a call to kennel retired Kojo Damwa, the commissioner of customs of gra one of the traders who underdeclared and misdeclared goods allegedly? What does it mean to underdeclare and misdeclare? You are carrying cocaine that you say is kolebu powder. That's misdeclaration. You are carrying one million pounds of a commodity that you say is only oh four hundred thousand pounds. You have underdeclared. You have other things on the cargo that you have decided not to declare. My brother, my sister, the country is going to suffer. People are not going to pay the right duties and taxes. Goods are going to enter our country that might be injurious to this generation and the next generation and could even be perpetually injurious to the rest of the generations to come. My brother, my sister, and who did they call? Kennel retired Kojo Damwa. And so, the special prosecutor says, I am going to get into it and find out exactly what is happening. My brother, my sister, there are instances where even cars that were supposed to be auctioned were given to party members, party food soldiers. And it's all over in the news. Watch this. More trouble for customs boss as group petition special prosecutor to extend investigations to cover 2009 
and all the way to 2015. Now, now the special prosecutor says 2016, all the way to 2022. We want to find out how many cars you have auctioned, who you gave the cars to, and at how much. Special prosecutor to probe auction of vehicles since July 2016. That's what we're talking about. Now, a group has decided to come back and say, please, take it way back before 2016. And these two guys are those involved in that. Now, let us look at that story. It's an interesting story. It says, according to the group of two uh, made up of uh, George Robia Sante and Andrew Jumo or say the investigations being undertaken by the uh, special prosecutor should be extended into the years covering 2019 to 2015 as people with considerable interest in and uh, support for the work of the special prosecutor and for an anti-corruption society generally we petition herein your esteemed office to consider extending the period for the investigation to cover the years 2019 to 2015 this is important as there have been several allegations of corruption in relation to the auction sales with that period uh, notable amongst which is the famous Carl Wilson matter where it was uh, uh, alleged that several auction cars were diverted without recourse to proper legal process a statement signed by them said watch it well instead of saying famous we we'll say infamous we all remember Carl Wilson car issues gunslinging using the law to their advantage unlawfully this is interesting isn't it now everybody is showing power in this country i have power i know this person i will do this and the arrogant customs boss cannot retired juma no not juma uh, 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 what's his name uh, 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 joe uh, damwa that's him so arrogantly talking as if he owns, uh, he owns Ghana. Now, special prosecutor, the small boy, is going to investigate him. I will not be surpri surprised if this man's hands are all dirty. And I support the fact that they should go back all the way to the 2019. And let's see exactly how it plays out. Now, people are beginning to show interest in the office of the special prosecutor. Especially that some one million plus has been forced out of the throats and stomachs of some greedy Labianca people who are still trying to fight it in one way or the other. My brother, my sister, you have a legacy to leave behind. It's not a legacy of uh, psychophantism. It's not a legacy of bootlicking. Nobody wants that. But in this period, it's all about bootlicking. Psychophants are all over the place. I mean singing songs that are not funny singing praises to people who do not deserve these praises my brother my sister i will say kudos to a special prosecutor you have dead the so-called old ass it's time now for you the little ass to deal with the old ass and you will set a good example for the younger generation and the younger folk who are now crying for mentors we don't have mentors anymore gone are the days when little boys will say oh the president is my mentor i want to be president how many people want to be president now with the abysmal performance of uh, the chameleon in what government my brother my sister no matter what you say the truth would always stand firm that's it away make we deal with the next thing next thing i would like to deal with is also tony very tony Yvonne Nelson topples Nana Ado's agenda of lies. Bleak future. Who is Yvonne Nelson? That's a slick, nice looking sister. Of course, if I get the opportunity, I'll buy her coffee one of these days. If I get the opportunity, I might even take her to dinner. This is a lady who has gone through a lot of controversies in the past. In fact, she fell in love in court. With a photographer, British photographer, was it an Italian photographer? And boom, she got pregnant and had a child. And then the wife of this photographer, 
a Nigerian actress or so came out and made a lot of noise about the whole Kabudo. But she still had a child. And from that time, she hasn't been very active on the screens. But she's been very active talking against dirty politics. And this is what she's doing. Look at it, Ghana Web. And this one is captured under entertainment because she's supposed to be an entertainer. What is she saying? We won't sit and watch you play with our future. And this is Yvonne Nelson to Akufuado. This is not the first time the actress Yvonne Nelson is doing this as captured in this story. Now, it says, according to, the, according to her, New Patriotic Party and its uh, then presidential candidate Akufu Addo deceived Ghanaians with promises and it is uh, evident that uh, they care not about the economic situation in the country after uh, uh, their mandate was renewed. Tweeting at President Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado, uh, the filmmaker um, maintained that the public will not sit aloof uh, whilst the president and his government take the country for granted. You see? That's it that way. Hear me now. Hear me now. A lot of Ghanaians do not really hate corruption. They only will hate it if they do not benefit from corruption. You can be as corrupt as you want. As long as you tip some Ghanaians, they are okay. Ghanaians, a lot of us will never fight corruption as long as we benefit from corruption. We don't care how many people die from corruption if we are still alive and benefit from the fruits of corruption. True? But in these times, my brother, my sister, it looks like the Ghanaian mind is being awakened. We all remember Yvonne Nelson. She marched a number of people to the seat of government for the Dumso demonstration against the then President Mahama. There were rumors that Yvonne Nelson and the president were in bed. In bed simply means they were friends, right? But she matched people there. They had the Dumso vigil. They lighted candles all over the place and chanted down the government. Now another government has come. And this time around, it's not about Dumso. You know what it is about? It's about corruption and stealing the future of the youth. This is terrible. Everybody knows, in other words, it's common knowledge that this is a government that is extremely arrogant, will not even listen to party members. Party members in the northern region are boycotting the president's tours all because of his bloated ego and arrogance. True? I agree. I was a fan of the president from the start. Because he spoke history and spoke Pan-Africanism. I didn't really care so much about his political tradition. I am an avowed Nkrumahist. But these are not Nkrumahists. But what he spoke represented Nkrumah. So I threw my weight behind this president. Only for me to realize that it's a chameleon. A dwarfish chameleon who is sick in the head. My brother, my sister, so arrogant he will not even listen to his party members. So arrogant that he has blown down the foundations of this country in a tsunami and reduced the currency of this country to the second worst performing currency in the world. We have only beaten the rupee from Sri Lanka. And we all know what happened in Sri Lanka recently, right? All they have in Sri Lanka is tea. Tea. We have more than tea. We have yam. We have plantain. And our yams are the best in the whole world. Forget about the cocoa. That one has become our signature. Yet our currency is the least performing. Only next to the Sri Lankan rupee. So when we look at this, we know that we don't have a future. To whom much is given, much is what required and expected. 
But when you give so much to this dirty government, and this government plays the game so dumb, and unleashes its attack dogs and hatchet men who are politically screwed up, and only see things the way of this dirty, arrogant party, then we know that we are in trouble. My brother, my sister, sometimes I wish I could say some things on TV. But decency and work ethics will not allow me to disgrace this profession. So I'll leave it here. But trust me, man, we are living in a time where the youth have no future. I've said it time and again. Almost every night, I walk into my children's room and I look up to see. And sometimes I wonder why I still don't have holes in my roof. Because I do not know the last time I fixed that roof. If holes come in right now, I wonder how I'll be able to sort them out. And I look at my little children. I raise my hands and I pray for them. And I apologize to them in their sleep for bringing them in these times when we have an arrogant government, dirty government, with politicians who are not ready to think about the people. All they think about is winning the next election. If Von Nelson has hit the nail right on the head, our future is being toyed with. We have an arrogant president, a lying vice president, who is only good theoretically when it comes to the practical nature of the work. He's missing. Wale Wale Adam Smith wants to be president of this country over our dead bodies. That is my hometown. I would have loved him to be president so that he would be the first Wale Walean to be president. But no, Ghana first. Wale Wale Adam Smith should never be allowed to be president of this country until he is able to reinvent himself. Even in Wale Wale, I wonder how many people are going to vote for this comedian. You are a big disappointment to the people. Terrible disappointment. Things you have said in the past are all coming back to bite you. I'm glad these days you have slowed down on your nonsensical vituperations. When the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will betray you. Oh yes, uh, Momo is used by poor people. And for that matter, we will never tax it because uh, that will not uh, uh, augur well for the economy and the welfare of the people. Big English and big Adam Smith talk. Now Wale Wale Adam Smith is sitting down there laughing at his own buffoonery. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonomo. Come here, come here, come here. Now, I get very passionate when I have to talk about the future. Because the future they say it's unknown. But when you plan the future, you can at least predict it to a certain point. If this government continues to be in power, there won't be any future for us. One dollar now is heading towards 11 Ghana cities. And what are they saying? We are pumping dollars into the system. Dollars. Why? Why? When would we ever hear that Britain is looking for Ghana cities to pump into Britain so that the economy can stand tall? Ha! If you take Ghana city to war on Somalia, you know what they will ask you? But this is too hard for toilet paper. Can you bring us proper toilet papers? True? When would America say we need Ghana cities to make our economy stand? You are still a colonial a country. You are still a colony of the West. Because everything you do, you owe allegiance to your puppet masters. It's a shame. I'm looking for that president who will make it happen. Nkrumah was looking forward to doing it. He was working at it. Gaddafi came trying to do it. And they both suffered the same fate. When we return, 
I will tell you more. But I have a quote about our future. Check it out. And let us talk when I return. Woyo! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shodomo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Thanks so much to our sponsors. We appreciate you and we love you. Because we don't think about the future generation, they will never, ever forget us. We're talking about legacies. What are you leaving behind for the future generation? We remember Nkrumah. We remember all those wonderful people. At the same time, we also remember Napoleon Bonaparte. Mobuto Seseko, and all those dangerously terrible, vampirous people who suck the blood of the sulfur. They never thought about the future generation. My brother, my sister, think about it. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Next, I have something to look at. What is he saying? Watch it. Bamenda, now a ghost town. Those of you who studied geography, look at Bamenda. It's a whole huge city. One of the largest cities right there in Cameroon. We all remember the Adamawa Bamenda Highlands, right? Those of you who studied geography, if you don't know that, then you didn't study geography. No. BPC says what? Cameroon's Bamenda, where only the coffin trade is booming. Hey. Hey. Only coffin business booms. There are more dead people than the living. And when you read the story, you will cry. Once a thriving city in Cameroon, Bamenda has been ripped of its soul by the five-year war between English-speaking secessionists and the mainly French-speaking government. Bamenda is all but dead. Only the coffin trade is booming. Bodies are dumped regularly all over the city in mortuaries, on streets, and in rivers. Council workers pick them up and give them a pauper's burial. It is a blessing to be buried at all. Let alone family and friends. Mm. Did you see that? It is a blessing to be buried at all. Let alone by family and friends, says a cemetery worker as he comes to pick up 10 cheap coffins from a funeral parlor. Demand has dropped for the once popular elaborately designed coffins shaped like Bibles, cars, or beer bottles to reflect the lifestyle, interest, or last wishes of the dead. And when you read it further, it is sad. Watch. Paul Bia is killing people in that country. He's been in power for four decades. 40 years, close to 40 years now. Paul Bia, my brother and my sister, is French speaking. And from the same BBC, we hear that he has a lot of support from Britain. And some other such countries. Whilst the people are dying. Left, right and center. He himself lives in Switzerland. He lives in a hotel. Intercontinental. Wherever. In Geneva. Where he pays a lot of money. And he rules his country from Geneva. In Switzerland. Because he says that. The weather in his country is not good for his very, very sensitive skin. That's him. 
So he has to go and protect this skin. This old ass skin. People are dying. Now in Bamenda, it's all about coffins. Coffin sellers are all going there. Cheap coffins. And then they bury people because they are dying every now and then. To those of us who do not know the history, enlarge this thing a little bit so that our uh, viewers can see it properly. Now, when you look at it, it says that the war has its roots in uh, grievances that date back to the end of colonialism, which uh, British controlled territory was unified with French areas to create what is now Cameroon. Oh, yes. Did you see that? The war has its roots in grievances that date back to the end of colonialism when British controlled territories, who, territory was unified with French areas to create what is now Cameroon. Many English speaking Cameroonians have felt marginalized over ever since things and have opposed what they see as a uh, Attempts by the government dominated by the French speaking majority to force them to give up their way of life, including their language, history, education, and legal system. Tensions boiled over in 2016 when tens of thousands of people in Bamenda and other English speaking areas embarked on a series of protests against the use of French in their schools and courts, as well as the failure to publish government documents in English, even though it is an official language. You see that? You see that? So because of that, because of the language you speak in Cameroon, you could be gunned down. So many towns and villages have been bent down. Women and children killed. Bambenda. Monyange. Barefoot. Tenazi. And all those places, including Melon, we see people dying night and day, all because of beer. That's their attack police. They call that the beer, B-I-R. And people are dying night and day. So the best thing to do is to go sell coffins to the people. Yet the West is still supporting the mayhem and the murderous nature of a dirty president, Paul Beer. Such a dirty president. He's there in Cameroon, killing people. And now there is Ambazonia. The English-speaking people want to break away. And they are in the northwest and the southwest of Cameroon. But they will leave the whole of Cameroon, go to those areas and try to kill them. Northwest, southwest, that's where they are. In fact, because of this issue, I have become so knowledgeable in issues concerning Cameroon. Not because I want to, but because it is very necessary. Our brethren and sisters are dying there. What is the whole of Africa doing? Such a dirty president, to the point that people even flee the country, they go to France and some other places, and the authorities in these countries return them to Cameroon, even though they know the moment they arrive, Paul Bia is going to execute them summarily. They still send them away. Recently, they went to America. Remember Trump? Trump sent them back in a plane to go back to Cameroon and be killed. On arrival, they killed all of them. Trump is not a human being. This is a murderer. Yet, they are those who claim they are the masters of democracy. We pray for Cameroon especially for the English-speaking side, Northwest, Southwest, right there, Bamenda, Munyange, and all those places. We are with you. Our hearts go out. They want to break away. So they are called secessionists. And they want to call themselves Ambazonia. And when you check their history, they are not far from being right. They decided to come together and build something together. If it's not working, after some time as documented, they can leave. Now the old world has seen what is happening to these people. They want to leave. They say, hey, no. 
The rest of Cameroon is not coming together to say, hey, we don't like what is happening. We are also going to defend the rest of our, I mean, brethren, even though we don't speak the same language. But when you read it deeper, it's just a colonial war. Yet another colonial war. The French and the English. The French and the English. The Germans were the first to go there. And then they sold one part of it to the French and one part to the English. Now, after they were going, say, okay, you can now come together as a people. You speak English, you speak French, but it doesn't matter. We are one people. You come together. But there is that French majority that is trying to look down on the English minority. Our languages are still killing us. Colonial war. Colonial underpinnings. When we return, we have more to talk about in the interim. This is the blackboard. Wayo! My name is Waris. All of you know me as Comedian Waris. I come from a home where cleanliness is not only next to godliness, but a must. We seldom fell ill and we saved our doctor this headache. At an early age, my mother introduced us to our best gift ever, PJ's Acid Cleaner. PJ's Acid Cleaner kills 99% of all gems and keeps your WCs, marbles, tiles, and concrete floors sparkling new and clean. In fact, you don't need any extra muscle when it comes to PJ's Acid Cleaner. It has all the muscle. When my fiancé, Mamiya, first visited me, I almost lost her. She didn't believe I was single, lived alone, and without a house help. Yet my house had this great fragrance and was always clean. I had to reveal my secret. PJ's Acid Cleaner, my family's greatest gift. For bulk purchases. Please call 0244-624-526 or 0262-233-243. Abu's Abu's chapter. Hey, babe. Sister Paulina, we're reading glasses here, Chinese. We're reading Hebrew. Hey, madam. Madam, when you see that that Hawaiian herbal capsule, a drawing, see that for what you send me, we're ready to mention glasses. Hey, no crew. Tinatet Hayan Herbal Capsules are your full supplement for good vision and not recommended for children below 12 years, asthmatic patients, pregnant and breastfeeding mothers.
cuffs, weave ons, nails, pedicure, manicure, waxing, massages. We do everything on selling beauty. So if any lady is thinking about beauty, I believe this is the right place for you to be. nail training here, we do brace training, we do weight cuffs installation, we do waxing, I mean anything that we do, the services that we render here, we also train people. So if you want to be a master in nails, if you want to be a professional nail technician, this is the right place for you to be. We will train you and make sure you are a professional, not just any nail at Check Luxury Beauty Home, we train you to be your own boss. We have international trainers who train you to fit in anywhere in the world. Um, we have our one-man training and we also have uh, two weeks. It's between two weeks to one month, depending on the individual. Whatever you want, we give it to you. At Chic Black Beauty Home, we give you quality yet affordable. So come and get trained and be your own boss. I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poetess and, I'm a, and I am an actress. Right? I do the whole. I've been doing it for many, many years. And so um, basically that's who I am. I am uh, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you and that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, crippled, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to you, so, with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of nothing no good. It's not good for you which is a lie you understand so there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money but they you know they are good and upright men you know they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them and so that song was really um you know to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money Give me a firm foundation with no sand. But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be that 16 B A R S M has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16 Bars M M.com. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me on, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's. So that's Empress 
which is D-I-A-N-N-A, so that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there. And also, you can um, you can reach us at 16 Bars mm at outlook.com so that is 16 this time it's the word it's the all spelled out 16 bars mm at outlook.com and if you choose when you go on our website which is the same 16 bars mm.com um you can go to the contact page and send us um a, a message you understand and usually we respond within a couple of hours all right, um, so that's basically it. And I'm sure at the end of um, this, you you will have a number somewhere to contact us. All right, so that's that's it, that's what I do. And you know, keep the music locked. <laughs> yes, I bless. Nice little crunch, don't go hurt you. Well, if I bet you where we plant, me now go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me in our pantry? Give me a firm. Sorry, sorry. Oh, doc. I want to know she 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 Tinatet Tumak, I'm on my free. Tinatet Malake, AMA malaria fever, and a Tinatet Tumak Mesha, AMA will be a Wenya indigestion. Yes, you should move to Wenya malaria and sign a waffle a dream. Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. Blackpot, Coco Show. This is the Black Pot, aka Kuku Shunamo, where we speak truth to power. We thank our sponsors and we love you. Hey, you soon do. How are you doing? All right. Well, he's now a minister in the government of, of uh, Senegal. He's a minister of state. See? And some people are saying, oh, I mean, you are a legend. Why do you go into politics and all that? Well, I just I want to say good afternoon to Awadi, DDA Awadi. And uh, Nabi, all of them, right? They are musicians in Senegal. Love and respect. All right, so the next thing I want to look at is still picturesque. Very colorful. Watch this. A president of elections, not the people. Who is this? Oh, oh okay. I'm not surprised. If it's this man, he's a chameleon. They behave as if their heads are no more screwed on their necks. They are walking like headless jacks. What's the president saying? And why are you guys saying that? Oh, oh okay. I will win 2024 elections for NPP. Akufuado declares. You see? He's only thinking about winning elections. Let us read this. And what is he saying? Enlarge it up a little bit so that we can have our viewers also see it properly. Okay. In an interview on Nandom FM during the tour of the Upper West region on August 22, the president said that, uh, said what mattered most for him was to work with the party executives to oversee the election of a flag bearer fairly and transparently. He said, once a flag bearer emerges out of the contest for the position fairly and transparently, NPP will be able to unite and triumph over the National Democratic Congress in the 2024 elections. Let's create the conditions for a fair, transparent pr process. Once, one that will enable uh, us after the competition to unite. That's that one, that's that one. You see, your city is exchanging 10 times to $1. Your economy has crashed. The worst performing currency in Africa. Second worst performing currency in the world. You are going around on a borrowing spree. 
And this is what you have to tell us. That you want to win the next election because we are idiots and fools who do not know what is good for us. The biggest mistake Ghanaians made was to vote a chameleon as a president. Say this and tomorrow change his mouth, as my people would say. The Dagombes have a say, and Mr. President, you have a Mampusi man as your vice president. Let him explain this proverb to you. The Mampusis and the Dagombes have the same tradition. They are from the same father. Come, follow me. Let me say so that you can see the movement of my mouth. You know how they say it? The mouth that says one thing and means another. The mouth that says this and later comes to say, I didn't say it. In fact, the anus is better than that mouth. That's the meaning. The mouth that says A and comes back to say, I didn't say A, I said F. Comes back later to say, oh, I meant Q. Oh, I didn't say that at all. Yet it's documented that you said it. The anus is better than that mouth. You know, the mouth and the anus, they look alike. Just that one only opens when two things are going to happen and you know what i'm talking about many people are happy to kiss the mouth but only a few people will kiss the anus my brother my sister they are only interested in winning elections god is watching them right so Ghanaians, if you keep these people in government, it's on to you. I have told you already, if Baumia wins the next election, I will be out of this country. Oh yes, it doesn't matter where. I would prefer to go and sit in Zimbabwe, go and sit in Niger, or any such country in the world that I deem fit. To suffer in another man's land. Is better than to sit in my country and self-inflict pain and foolishness on myself. Nah, not interested. Dash it away. Finally, there's one man flying around. He's flying. He has no respect for the doctors. The doctors in this country are not good enough to take care of him. COVID time came. He flew out and asked Ghanaians to pray for him because he thought he was dying. The prophet had already prophesied long before he fell ill that he was going to die. So when he fell ill and they put gas marks all over him, he thought he was dying. So he started crying. Oh, Jimmy, oh. Ghanaians pray for me. Oh. He came back with a puffy face and a bloated ego. Who is this man? Oh yeah, that's him. The man who claims Ghanaians are his children. Forgetting that we are actually his employer. Look, Kenoforiata travels abroad to seek medical review. Look at his face. This is not a healthy man. My brother, he's flown out of the country. And he has passed on the job of the nation to his deputy. Who he used to work with at the same data bank. That is today running to the euro bonds and also benefiting from the loans. Yet they are denying it. My brother, my sister, he's gone out. The medical people will tell you, oh, everybody's right to choose which doctors they go to. It's okay. But when we have idiots and fools like this guy and the president and his vice, idiots and fools. And when I say these things, I have no regret to. By their deeds, you shall know them. By their fruits, you shall know them. By their actions, you shall know them. Who have refused to build hospitals. Hospitals are there without beds. They are building a cathedral. They are only thinking about winning the next election. If they are not idiots and fools, who are they? At the time that we are told that we are benefiting from loans, 
that you are saddling this country with, you are flying to go and treat yourself. How about the millions of people who cannot even get access to a simple hospital bed to die quietly on? And when they even die, they do not have the luxury to be put in the morgue. They will rot because all the refrigerators are spoiled. To God be the glory. My name is Black Rasta. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. We are heard all over the world. In Africa, we are the champions of Pan-Africanism on TV. Pick our number on the screen. We are happy to hear from you. Do business with us. The truth is always an orphan. Anytime we speak the truth, we become orphans. Everybody runs away. That's why you shouldn't run away from us. Come do business with us. Take our numbers off the screen. Call us. WhatsApp call. Free call. Or send us a message. Tell us what business you are doing. And how we can do business together. The more you prosper. The more the African businesses prosper. The more we prosper. Until then. I love you. Wayo! Oh! 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 Oh!